Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show how to create a countdown application using Flutter framework. You will be able to play, pause and stop countdowns and use time picker to set countdown durations. To follow along, download starter project files from GitHub. Links are in the description. Before starting, I will walk you through the starter project files. Inside main dot file, I have a material app removed debug banner, set title to flutter countdown app. I have kept the default theme data values and added countdown page widget to the home property. Countdown page is a stateful widget. To do the countdown animation, it's necessary to have a stateful widget. Countdown page returns a scaffold and a column widget is assigned to the scaffold's body. There are two children inside column. First one is text widget wrapped in a center widget which is wrapped in expanded widget. Second children is a row widget wrapped in padding. Row widgets children is a custom widget called round button. The round button widget contains a circle avatar and icon wrapped in a padding widget. Alright, now let's start coding the app. Inside countdown page state, create an animation controller object. I'm going to call it controller. You can call it whatever you want. You will get an null safety error message saying non-nullable instance field controller must be initialized. To fix this error, add late keyword before animation controller object. At the next line, create init state method. Inside it, we will assign values to the animation controller. So I'm going to add controller equal to animation controller. Animation controller requires value for the vsync property. Add the keyword these two refer to the countdown page state. The vsync property requires a ticker provider, so we need to make our countdown page state act as a ticker provider. To do that, add with ticker provider state mixing to the countdown page state. This will make the countdown page state act as a ticker provider. Inside animation controller, call duration property and set its value to duration of 60 seconds. This 60 seconds will be our countdown timer starting duration. After init state, call dispose method. Inside it, write controller.dispose. This will dispose the animation controller and the state when they are not active. Every time you use dispose method, put your code before super dispose. And for init state, your code should be after super init state. Next, we need to create a string getter method to display countdown inside the text widget. Above init state method, write string get count text. Set it to return an empty string value. Inside count text function, create a duration variable called count. The count variable's value is going to be controller duration multiplied by controller value. We need to add null check to controller duration. We can do that by adding an exclamation symbol. Then edit the count text string value to return count variable in seconds. To call variables inside a string, use dollar sign and curly braces. Scroll down to the text widget that's inside scaffold's body. Delete existing string value and add count text function. Once you hit save, you will get this late initialization error. Doing a hard restart will fix this issue. Once the app is reloaded, you can see that the text value is zero. Now let's add functions to start countdown timer when we click this play button. Wrap the first round button in a gesture detector widget. Inside gesture detector, call onTab parameter. Inside onTab function, call controller.reverse method. The reverse method requires a parameter called from. So inside reverse, call from. The from parameter takes double data type for its value. I'm going to give controller value as a ternary operator. If controller.value equal to 0, set from value to 1.0 else from value will be controller dot value the ternary operator ensures that when we pause and resume countdown the countdown will resume from the moment it was passed now if i click on the play button nothing happens inside the screen that's because we haven't connected the text widget to the animation controller yet 
to do that we need to wrap text widget inside a animated builder widget inside animated builder call animation property and assign controller to its value then call builder parameter builder will have a builder function that will return the animating widget in our case it will be the text widget now if i click on the play button the animation will play and we can see the countdown running on screen if i change controller duration to 90 seconds and rerun the app when i start the countdown the countdown will run from 90 seconds that's not a proper way to display countdown timers so we need to adjust count text function to display the countdown duration in proper format like hours minutes and seconds inside count text function return value after count dot in seconds add modulo 60 so that the count text will only display remainder of the control duration and 60 in the seconds place then put them in parentheses call two string method and pad left method if we have a single digit for seconds pad left method will insert zero before the single digit pad left method requires two arguments a width and a string we need to give two for width and zero for string let's move on to adding formats for minutes and hours add a separated before counting seconds then call count duration in minutes format it like we formatted for seconds then call count duration in hours as well i'm not going to have a pad left method for hours all right now let's make the play button to pause countdown if it's running inside just a detector on tab function create an if statement the is animating method is a boolean getter function it will return true when the controller is animating so call controller dot stop inside if block if the controller is animating when the button is pressed the stop method will stop the animation at current value then call else block and move control dot reverse method into else block now pressing the play button while countdown is running will pause the countdown let's add functions to make the play button icon to change while countdown is running and paused go to the top after animation controller create a boolean variable called is playing and set its value to false come back to just a detector inside if block call set state method set is playing equal to false then inside else block call another set state method this time set is playing equal to true now we need to use ternary operators to change the icons if is playing is true i want to show pause icon else show play arrow icon save and restart the app every time you create a new set state method you need to restart the app for the code to work properly the play button works as expected the play icon changes to pause while the animation is running now let's customize the stop button wrap the second round button in just a detector widget call on tap property inside on tap function call controller dot reset also call set state method set is playing equal to false the reset method will reset the control value to 0 therefore the countdown will reset back to 0 when the stop button is pressed right now the countdown duration is set inside the animation controller object we need to add a way to set countdown duration in the app interface wrap animated builder inside a just a detector widget call on tab property inside on tab function call show model bottom sheet keep context parameter value to default 
change builder value to a builder function that returns a container widget. Set container height to 300. Call child property. Assign Cupertino timer picker to its value. Cupertino timer picker requires a parameter called on timer duration changed. Its value is going to be a callback function. The callback function will run every time the duration changed in the Cupertino timer picker. I am passing the duration value as time in the function parameter. Then inside function set controller dot duration equal to time. Put it inside a set state method. Now let's pick a duration using Cupertino picker and see if it changes the animation controller duration. After I picked the countdown duration, the text still remains in zero. So to see the current duration after selecting it, we need to adjust context getter method. In the context function, call a ternary statement if controller is dismissed. Return a different string value. Just copy paste the count string value and replace count with controller dot duration. Make sure to add null check operator to controller duration. Now changing the duration in time picker will update the countdown text immediately. Every time we open the timer picker, default duration is set to show 0 hours, 0 minutes and seconds. Instead of 0, let's make it show the duration we picked last time. Inside Cupertino timer picker, call initial duration property. Set its value to controller duration. Make sure to add null check operator for duration. Now let's add a progress indicator to show countdown progress animation. We need to wrap this gesture detector widget in a stack widget. First I'm going to wrap it in a column and change its name to stack. Then add a circular progress indicator widget as a first children of stack widget. The circular progress indicator size is too small. To scale it, wrap it in a size to box widget, then set its width and height to 300. To fix the alignment problem, inside stack widget, call alignment property, set its value to alignment.center. This will center align all of the stack widget children. We don't need this center widget anymore, so let's remove it. The circular progress indicator has few parameters for its customization. Value parameter takes in a double value. It controls the progress circle animation. We can set a background color too. I am going to use gray color with a shade of 300. Stroke width controls the progress circle's thickness. Let's set it to 6. As we already know, the value property controls the progress animation. Remove 0 0.6 and add controller.value. Let's see if it works. Restart the app, start countdown. The progress indicator is not updating while countdown is running, but it updates only after we pass the countdown. That's because when we pass countdown, set state method is called. So that's when the progress indicator gets the controller value. Go to init state function, call controller.addListener method. This function will run every time animation controller value changes. Create if statement. If controller is animating, call set state method and set progress equal to controller value. We are listening for the controller value every second and assigning to the variable progress. We will pass progress to the circle progress indicator value. We haven't initialized the progress variable yet, so let's do that. 
I am setting progress default value to 1.0. Add else block to the if statement, call set state method, then set progress equal to 1.0. So when the control is not animating, the progress value will be set to 1.0. Then inside circular progress indicator, remove control dot value and add progress variable. Now we can see the progress animation in real time. When countdown is running, if I try to change the duration, running countdown duration changes. We need to restrict user from picking duration while countdown is running. Create an if statement inside onTap function. If controller is dismissed, I want to run the code that's inside if block. Cut model bottom sheet code and paste it inside if block. So now the time picker will only appear if there is no countdown running. To play notification sounds when the countdown is finished, we need to use a plugin. Go to pub.dev, search for Flutter ringtone player. Open Flutter ringtone player page and copy plugin name by clicking this icon. Come back to project, open PubSpec YAML file and paste the plugin name under dependencies. Inside countdown page dot file, import ringtone player package. Then create a void function. I'm going to name it notify. Inside notify function, create an if statement. I'm going to check if the count text string value equal to 0 semicolon 00 semicolon 00. This condition will become true after countdown animation finished playing. So if the condition is true, call flutter ringtone player dot play notification this method will play default notification sound of Android or iOS based on the operating system the app runs on. Then inside add listener method call notify. Since we added a new dependency, we need to stop debugging and rerun the app from start. Once the app is loaded, let's test it by setting countdown to 4 seconds. Alright, it works as expected. After countdown is completed, we still see the pause button. It should change back to play button. To fix it, go to add listener method. Inside else block set state method, set is playing equal to false. Since we modified set state, we need to restart the app. Let's see if it works. Alright, that's it for this video. You can download the completed project files from GitHub. I hope this video was useful for you. If you like this video, click like and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.